of that is the lady said. Not, not enough coverage of that thing. Oil and gas, guys! We know there have been some coverage of oil and gas prices, but they continue to push higher, guys, and we're starting to hear the same old refrain from some high-ranking Democrats and Republicans. Come on, can you tell the difference, Tracy? Rain in those speculators. Meanwhile, housing speculators are back, too. Mom and pop folks who apparently didn't learn their lesson the last time around are buying houses with new, easy-to-get, cheap credit, thanks to yeah, Ben Bernanke and little Tim Geithner and the Republican-Democrat fascist regime in charge, guys. Many are borrowing against their own homes equity, just like they did during the bubble. A local paper chronicling a combo with one such small speculator, quote, you know that's how a lot of people got into financial, deep financial trouble just a few years ago, right? Are you sure about this? Not completely sure, he admitted, but, quote, I'm an optimist, he said. Plus, we'll bail him out if it goes awry anyway, Tracy. So is Congress going to crack down on oil and housing speculators, or are they actually going to continue, I don't know, enhancing and creating incentives for speculating in these guys. Welcome back to radio host Leslie Marshall. Leslie, I'm very confused because it seems to me the Republicans and Democrats in charge keep telling me that I've got to get speculators back into housing in order to stabilize housing with my tax dollars. Can we please stop all tax credits and allow speculators to do what they want? <laughs> Well, as long as you are you, talk, are you talking about uh, our oil speculators? No. If you're talking about the housing market, I am in agreement with you regarding some of the concerns because this does seem a little deja vu. Isn't this how we got into this problem? Then again, I think that consumers are being a bit more cautious, and certainly we see there isn't but the Leslie, lending out I'm there there not, was, regardless wanna, of this legislation. I don't want to address it there from a demand slash, you know, like a free market person coming in and taking their own hard-earned capital, but it seems to me that the Republicans and Democrats in power are actually creating these new incentives, $8,000 for a first-time home speculator. I don't know what else to call that. Well, I do agree with you that it does seem like deja vu. However, we do have to have people purchase homes to, to improve the economy and obviously to improve the housing market. Even if some of these people are purchasing homes to rent them, which I'm seeing a lot of here in Southern yeah, but, California, but with the look. prices that have been driven down and the ability to handle the cost of that mortgage by renting it and living in a separate home or even renting a separate home for yourself, in the long run, that could be good for both the economy and for the consumer. But look, I mean, even, you know, housing, oil, who cares what it is? Speculators are part of capitalist economy. They should be out there. They should be allowed to do what they do. And you know what? You make stupid choices, you have to pay for it. And I think it all comes back to get the government out of this. Let the speculators bring oil up or down or anywhere they want to bring it. Quite frankly, I don't really think the speculators are moving oil all that much. But well, shouldn't I, they just I don't be allowed with to you do their I don't thing? agree with you when it comes to oil. Talk I don't to, agree with you when it comes to oil. Ahead, with the, spe the speculators have been, the speculators have been the problem. The re you know, if you look at it, Saudi Arabia and the other oil exporting countries want our recession to end, and our recession not ending hinders uh, their profit and speculators driving the cost of gasoline up. It's gone up 12 cents, uh, you know, a gallon in the past few weeks here in the state of can California, you, where Marshall, I live and, you, and, and broadcasting you? with you from. Can you define the difference between a speculator and an investor? I mean, it seems to me that my mom might allocate some of her 403B as her teacher's savings account into, say, commodities, which would include oil, and all of a sudden she's a speculator. Do you want to stop that, or do you consider her an investor? And if so, who gets to decide which is which? I don't know that I can fully answer who gets to decide which is which, but there's a difference between somebody who's purposely trying to drive up the market, and I don't think your mom's trying to do that. Oh, so, if your mom's but, investing right, so her money to then. make that's some a profit, manipulator. but if she's specifically trying to drive up the market. And that is a market manipulator, not a speculator. But if you follow the news, I mean, all they have to do is say the global economy is getting better But a speculator is manipulative compared up. to an investor. But if you listen to the news... A speculator is manipulative compared to an investor. That's that definition the, I need the, from you. I don't get that. Although the end... I'm sorry? That's the definition I'm looking for you. From from you. I explain That's what to me I'm the saying. difference. That a specu a speculator is manipulating and specifically their 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 actions are manipulating the market to specifically drive a cost up such as the the price of gas your mother is in investing in something that she almost like betting on a horse is hoping will be the winner and yield a higher return to her. I don't know. I think we give these speculators too much credit. Amen to that. I don't know. And I can't tell the difference between speculator and manipul uh, investor. Manipulator, I think, is what she's referencing there, which would be not necessarily speculator. Leslie Marshall, 
thank you for spending some time with us as always. Come back. We love it when you re 